Hello, everyone. Welcome to Small Talk. Well, at the risk of repeating myself, you know, there are many, many multiple, multiple talented people out there. Take today's guest, for example. He is, let's see now, an artist, a live painter, illustrator, graphic designer, and a lead singer, the lead singer at the, with the band Rocket Fuel. Isn't that cool? Ladies and gentlemen, Juan Pablo Vega. <laughs> My gosh. Hi. <laughs> that was a long introduction. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Yeah. So thank you very much for having welcome me. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I don't know where to start. I really don't. There's so many things, but I want to ask about a uh, live painter. What does that involve? Oh well, that's a, that's an interesting thing. About ten years ago, um, uh, well, I arrived in Canada when I just moved in, and I didn't really have a connection with the art community. So I subscribed to a couple of uh, art groups, uh, different kinds of um, art scenes that were happening here and there. And one of the painters suggested that I should try doing an art battle. And um, there was multiple multiple types of these events. Like there's different kinds, battle of the brush, art battle, paint brawls, and sometimes even like uh, one-offs for charity that they do auctions where live painters get together create a piece. Sometimes there's a theme, sometimes it's free, like open source, whatever you want to do. Mm. And um, so he suggested that. And I was like, oh, that's that's pretty intimidating because <laughs> I've only been sort of an introvert and always doing my artwork at home under a controlled environment. And um, so and in that situation, I was like, OK, that'll be interesting. And he invited me to go to a, one of those shows. And I and I went and I saw it. And I was blown away with how these guys could paint a full paint, a full piece in less than 20 minutes. And then it was auctioned and, and, you know, and the audience would vote for who's the winner and the best one and all that stuff. And it's a very hip scene where everybody's like, it's, it's way more energetic and, and, and the vibes are awesome. So uh, I was enamored with the whole situation and I, uh, I applied immediately. Of course, my first couple tries, uh, I did not win. I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, it was, it was a growing um, learning experience, but the great part of that was to be able to connect with other artists mm -hmm. and get included into the scene and, uh, and make good friends, got to connect with the people, got to connect with the audience. Um, people would be very interested in the work. So we were, we were able to build a group of artists that, you know, um, we're, we're very open to inclusiveness of all kinds. And, uh, and that just, it took off. And uh, I've won a couple of competitions. I haven't made it all the way to the nationals, but I've won a couple of regionals and uh, yeah, and, and made really great friends and expanded on the art community. And, you know, it's not just landscapes and stuff. This is completely, it could be anything. And uh, the freedom is very awesome. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> I, I've seen there's a show, um, and I can't remember it, but they do nudes and it's live. So they're yeah. the artists there, and then there's like, I think there's five or six people. Yes. Like, and they, they have different angles, of course, depending on where they're set up with their easels. So it's kind of yeah. interesting, the same type of thing, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, but I just want to backtrack for a second. You said when you came to Canada, where'd you come from? Yeah, I'm from Venezuela. Uh, I moved to Canada in 2007, at the end of 2007, and uh, and then I sponsored my wife and established myself here, and you know had some, had some kids, right. um, you know, and and uh, once I was established, it's been it's been a while since 2007, so so I'm I'm well integrated now, but uh, at the beginning it was very intimidating. I wasn't even able to find myself in the music scene. So I didn't, I didn't get integrated into the music scene for a couple of years as well mm -hmm. until my brother, he's a sound engineer. He also moved to Canada after he, after I moved in, like basically all my family came along and, 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 and now we're, now we're all established here. And uh, he was a sound engineer and he was trying to get into the music scene. And he was like, we used to be in a band together back in Venezuela when we were teenagers. And he was like, yeah, let's, let's start a band. Let's get it all started over again. And that's how mm -hmm. rocket kind of initiated in its early stages. We were, we were uh, searching out to connect with other musicians that were trying to do originals because yeah. uh, we, we did the cover th thing for a very long time. Like everything, I, mean, I guess every band starts doing covers in the, in the, in their beginning stages because they're starting to develop their own sound. And then uh, we basically started to create our own music through there. And um, yeah, that's how that's how Rocket Fuel was started. He 
he came up to me and presented, Hey, you want to sing in my band? Cause we don't, we can't find a singer. And I'm like, okay, but mm-hmm. if we're going to do this, it's going to be all originals. We're going to try and record and we need to go on stage. Like this is not going to be a hobby thing. This is going to be serious. I want to take this seriously because I don't have time to be, you know, just winging it and doing things, even though it's pleasurable to do that. And I'm, I'm not dissing anybody who's doing that kind of stuff, but at the same time, like my passion for the music and the arts are way more important. So I needed to take this very seriously. And, you know, many, many, like we've already been, we started in uh, 2017 at Rocket Fuel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was, it took me a while because it was a 10 year period of time where I didn't do any live music or performances or anything. And then uh, we, we were able to, set up a, a set list we started playing small venues and and you know we ended up playing different locations and things like that but it's 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 taken off and it's taking it's doing really great right now that's very really awesome by the way you don't have an accent what happened to your accent oh well um <laughs> I'm, I'm from a mixed um uh, like my my family my my origins are my grandmother is canadian okay. she was from from como lake and uh, she passed away, but uh, she's she's uh, she was a Canadian. She married with a Venezuelan and moved to Venezuela back in the 1950s and 60s mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, established her family there. So I grew up with English and Spanish as normal, like because she would speak in English and all my uncles and, and my father was were Canadian uh, and like they have the Canadian nationality as well. And so. We, it was normal for me. It was sort of like I didn't I couldn't tell the difference between Spanish and English. <laughs> uh, it was it was a mix of everything. And, you know, there was a little bit of French and I'm very open to, to learning as many languages as I can. So, yeah, I kind of grew up already with with both languages in there. That's nice because I, I have French side. So I the same basically the same thing. Right. My father's side was all French and my mother's side English. And, you know, although we grew up English, basically it was you pick up the other language much easier, I find, if you yeah. have there, right? Yeah. And that's my a- mother's tongue and my father's tongue. Like they, we would, we would have both. And not only that, that uh, my my parents went to college in the states. So mm-hmm. at a young age, I went to school in the in the states for a while, and then we moved back to Venezuela, and then I continued my education um, there. Nice. So yeah. I would ace the English classes all the time and, uh, and art classes and music and stuff like that. Everything else was a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a well. while. That sounds very exciting. It really does. I think it's awesome. Uh, you. Now, you're also uh, an illustrator. So um, for other people, like what, what is it? What type of illustration do you do? Or does it? Um, yeah. No, thanks. Thanks. That's a good question. Um, well, since an early age, I think uh, my father was very proud of, of me in, in kindergarten because uh, I was the only kid that could actually make sense of his drawings. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, everybody's gallery would be like, you know, hand prints and stuff like that. And I actually made like a, 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 a quad underwater scene where there was horse fish and, and, and crabs and algae and, you know, whales and stuff like that. So my painting... That, I was two years old and I was the only one who actually had some sort of um, uh, proper uh, you can see, you can see. concept. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was super proud at that. He took a picture of it and he hung it on the fridge and like, it was, it was a big deal. And, uh, and since I was a little kid, I always, I, I was fascinated with Jim Henson and, and with uh, Disney and, and Warner Brothers and all these kinds of cartoons. And, and growing up during the 80s, it was sort of like an explosion of animation. Right. And we would have all this, all these stimulant um, imagery all over the place. So I really loved animation and cartooning. So I would be sitting down and drawing all the time because um, it was a way to express myself and also express these ideas and feelings that were that that I needed to bring out. And uh, there was also a lot of talent around me. Like I had graphic designers and artists and other talented people and musicians in the family. Like my uncle played guitar and my, my aunts would play the piano and would sing. And uh, my, one of my aunts was a painter and a really good illustrator. She would do uh, cartoons of people that she met all the time. And my mom would also do cartoons for me. Like I would ask her to draw Batman because I was watching Batman on TV and she would draw Batman for me in the stick figure, right? But I was so fascinated with how she did that mm-hmm. that I said I would do that too. So 
so I, from a very young age, I was always surrounded and, and, and encouraged to, to, to let my art be and fly and flow. And, um, and then, you know, I, I pursued a career in graphic design because back in Venezuela, there aren't any animation studios or anything like that. Okay. So, so the next best thing for me was animation of like to, to close to being creative and expressing myself in creativity. I became a graphic designer and uh, you know what, it, it's really expanded on all the things that I could do and accomplish. And it also gave me a, a steady income. Um, I, I ended up working as all the way up to the funny thing is that throughout my work, even though I was a graphic designer and they would, you know, they, 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 they considered me a pretty good one. Um, they, they would see me drawing on the side. You know, I was always with a sketchbook and drawing in the corner. So like uh, the art directors would come up and say, hey, can you do the storyboard for the next commercial that we have to do? So I would do the storyboards for the commercials and, and, and TV ads and stuff like that. So I would get integrated with like movie directors and TV directors and stuff like that that had to be creative and stuff. And they would ask me to do their storyboards. And and, uh, and then I ended up connecting that way and, and finding my way to put my art through different mediums, even though it wasn't as like the main thing. And I'm also a big comic book geek. So, uh, so yeah, fascinated with the things like, you know, Frank Frazetta and Mobius and, and all the great masters of illustration that aren't considered, you know, um, that aren't considered the, 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 you, I, I, I don't like to use that that term because it's it's so encapsulating. It it, it makes you think inside of a box, and, and creativity should be you know free and expressive and all that. But um, I would I would study uh, uh, these painters that would create these fantasy landscapes, and 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 I was enamored with things like movies like heavy metal and and uh, you know more adult animation and things like that. More more into my edgier years. So there's a lot of influences in those things in my artwork as well. So right. that's developed me into becoming, I would like to be a comic book artist and I have done some comic books and some, uh, you know, prototypes for movies and things like that and storyboards and, and uh, coloring books and school books for kids. Like I used to work at a print uh, at a edit editing company for a while. One of my first at 16 years old, I worked at a print, like a proper book print yeah. and I, lot there like seeing how everything was done and um yeah so once once that happened we we uh like i was able to kind of express my art and do the things that i kind of couldn't achieve in venezuela because there wasn't the animation studio or the or the comic book studios but i found little venue like little vignettes of here and there to to put my art out and uh and yeah it's it's helped me and opened a lot of doors because once i show my portfolio of all the crazy stuff i've done um, you know, it, it, it kind of like, I don't even need to show them my curriculum. I just open the book and this is what I do. And, uh, yeah, it's like even the, even rocket fuel t-shirts. I'm not sure if you can see that with the filter yeah, yeah. and stuff. Stand up again. Stand up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So even my rocket fuel t-shirts, that's all original comic book art and stuff like that. I'll, I'll send you links and, and post to it. Cause we've, I've got a, um, a whole bunch of artwork that we're putting on t-shirts and things like that to promote the band and help support the group. And, you know keep the lights on but it's all sort of like a labor of love um and and it it kind of fuels me to 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 keep on going because it's the reason for me to to live you know it, it has to be part of my life and i've integrated into it the best i can you gotta do what you meant to do right it's as simple as that yeah yeah but it's not simple <laughs> no it's not there's a lot of work like sometimes I, I i work till the point of exhaustion um but but it's worth it in the end all those sacrifices and hard work do pay off you know and i've just found that with tenacity i've been able to kind of just keep working keep going keep you know there's one way or, the, or other sometimes the path is different everybody's journey is not the same but but with with dedication and and a lot of uh it's, it's not easy. It's not easy because sometimes you're putting yourself down. It's like, am I good enough? Am, am I, is this okay? Is this going to sell? Or is, and, and you know what? You don't have to worry about those things. You just have to keep working, keep putting it out there. Let the work speak for itself and, you know, share it with the world because the world really does need more art and yes. music. Yeah. I, I agree to both. You know, I, I've, I've interviewed so many musicians and I said the worst thing that happened during COVID was to shut down music venues because that's exactly what we needed at that time. You mm -hmm. know, 
right? And and because it got it was difficult for people who who perform, who live to perform. That's what they do. And yeah. so they, I mean, I, I know there was other people affected. I don't mean that, but when there's times of crisis, we need something to lift us up. And music yeah. and art is one of those things that does that, in my opinion. Oh yeah, for sure. There was the the the, the great part, and and I'm not saying that COVID was great. It was a very difficult time for everyone. Yeah. We were all we were all trying to relearn how to now live under this new situation and 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 pulling through and i think that the arts took a took a major they they had to step up and 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 find new creative venues to share and connect with people and 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 that actually even though um it it it, it was a bit, very difficult time for everyone it also gave us the opportunity to explore newer newer ways of of expressing our arts and expressing our our connections and it gave us also some time to sit back like it, all of a sudden it's like somebody you know hit the brakes on that train and it and it stalled there for a while and and we didn't know what to do and um but it gave us time like lots of people started learning how to play a guitar lots yeah. of people started recording their own music at home uh, I took some time to make some animation um, that that I wanted to do videos for the band and the music that we already recorded and stuff, because right. um, all those things require all that time. And then we also found different ways, like through Zoom and through video and editing and social media and all that stuff. We were able to at least connect with other people mm -hmm. and express our art and have uh, something going on. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was it was a weird time, but at the same time, it was a totally unique experience. Well, as you mentioned, Zoom, you know, this is what it did for me. It enabled me to interview anybody anywhere, and I yeah. I wasn't I'm, I'm a I'm a person who's a loner, so I didn't mind being stuck. You know, being yeah. nothing means nothing to me because I have social anxiety. But but at the same time, talking to people anywhere across the world was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> It, yeah, it's easier to do it on Zoom than in person. <laughs> for sure, for sure, and and the setup is a lot. Yeah, it, it, there's a whole bunch of aspects that are way more uh, accommodating, especially for us that are introverts, right? Like yeah. I work in a studio by myself for hours and hours and hours, and I don't feel like I can paint for twelve hours a day, and I don't get tired because it actually recharges my energy. I'm sitting alone in a studio. I just have to listen to some good music. Yeah, and go and let it happen, and I try to listen to all kinds of stuff. Um, so, so yeah, being an introvert, COVID really didn't hurt me emotionally, Yes, but did find that there were other aspects of, of the rest of the world yeah. that need to get out. And, uh, but I also have kids and, and having kids locked up was socially very hard on them. Like they would have nervous, like they would have emotional breakdowns daily. And we we're like, but we can't go out. We can't go outside. We have to. So we'd like, okay, let's exercise at home or let's do things. Yeah. It's a, uh, it was very stressful for everyone in general who aren't introverts. Yes. Um, so, so I can see, I could see firsthand what that sort of thing could affect people. And some people that were locked in in situations that they couldn't handle because they didn't have a way out. Yeah. So some people yeah, didn't do well. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I consider people you know, like you and me, yeah. like introverted extroverts or extroverted introverts. <laughs> yeah. Because you can yeah. be up on stage and perform and it's all full of life, life and yeah. life. I can do anything on stage or in front of a camera, you know, yeah. but there's yeah. the other side, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I've, I used to be very shy, um, like, yeah. but um, there were certain things that helped me kind of break out of that. So you develop a little bit of of how to become as a sort of a defense mechanism you have to become an extrovert in your introvertness right. because some people need and 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 you know I, I did a little bit of theater and acting and things like that and and and, and you explore all these different venues of expression right yeah. and uh, being being in Latino America I uh, I was very shy but my aunts would always get me like here dance with me every party every birthday party every union any kind of reunion of any kind there was always music and celebration and dancing and you know while the guys were on the barbecue and doing stuff like the, the they would put on music and dancing in the kitchen so they would grab me come here I was like eight or ten years old come here you got to learn how to dance you know how to shake those bones come here and they would and they would teach me how to dance and and, and I was like okay fine 
And I would do it sort of like, okay, go dance with your cousins and their 15th birthday or whatever. Like, and, sing <laughs> it. and okay, so I have to dance. And I have a lot of cousins, like male and female all over, like 27 cousins. So every party was like 100 people at least. Yeah. <laughs> so like I learned how to kind of like if the squeaky wheel, right? If you don't yell and become this big, big thing, you don't get any attention at all. You probably will starve. So, um, so yeah, like, so you learn to be this extroverted creature within that warmth environment. Yeah. And I learned how to dance and I learned how to act. And, 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 and when my, when I started my first band with my brother, we were a punk rock band in, in the nineties and, and it was all like, you know, the aggression and the angst of being a teenager. Hmm. But, um, I was so shy on stage. I, I wouldn't move. I would stand right, you know, hold it. I, I wouldn't even hold the microphone. I was like, uh, cause I knew I could sing. Right. But I was so bashful that I really didn't do anything for a very long time. It wasn't until I was probably 18 or 20 when I got went to college that I realized that, you know, uh, uh, the drummer's brother came up to see that, man, you got to grab that microphone. You got to sing into that thing like you mean it, man. If you're not having a good time, the audience won't have a good time. So you have to be like you have to be that that funnel, that focal point where that's going to come from and, and the energy needs to burst from you. So you need to be wild, man. You need to get out there. So I, I kind of like, OK, OK, this is a performance. This is a thing. This is when I'm on stage and, and the energy that's going on on stage now, I it's I'm addicted. I can't I can't stop. It's great. <laughs> I hear yeah 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 I understand that too. <laughs> um, so now speaking about your your music now this is going to be airing I think the first week in April. Do you have any performances coming up that will be after that date? Oh okay yes we do. Um, I haven't I haven't posted most of those things. We have we have a, a website Rocket Fuel the band. Okay. Um, we also from YouTube. you that um, after this I'll get you to message me all of that information and then yeah. I. In the you know when I, when I do the write up for the rendering right yeah no problem I like we've had we we did our first show so um, Rocket Fuel after COVID took took a took a, a uh, took a hit um, our bass player couldn't couldn't keep up with 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 life in general like there was things happening in life and you know those things happen people people have to go in different directions sometimes so the bass player had to leave. Uh, we 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 couldn't find a keyboard player for a while because mm -hmm. you know it's hit and a miss either for you know they weren't local or they couldn't play certain shows so it was like okay this is not working out um, and then the drummer got injured and needed knee surgery so he wasn't going to be able to play this uh, so so there was a whole bunch of things happening all at once and it ended up being just me and the guitar player the original members of the first lineup right. and uh, so we went acoustic for about a year playing you know playing mm -hmm. little uh shows here and there and trying to keep things up because we wanted to keep the band whatever it took right yeah um, and then we met uh Blake Miskew he came in and tried out he's like okay I think it's time to start you know get finding band members and we found Blake and and it, and then Blake's energy just just gave us a new hope and then and then Steve Ricardo joined the band because he oh. played with yeah. So, so um, the funny thing is that we played with Steve Ricardo. We've played with most musicians in other situations. And Steve was the guitar player of another band that we played on, on a different lineup when we played the Blackbird back in, I think it was 2019. Right. Um, and, uh, and then they shut down the Blackboard um, and Steve's band kind of also, you know, split up and stuff. And, and he was like, yeah, I know you guys. And I liked what you guys had. So like, I'd love to play with you guys. And I'm like, okay but you're, 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 you're up there, man. Like you're, you've got stuff going on. And he's like, you know, I'm all in 120%. And, and, you know, it was, it was kind of like, Oh, we don't know. Are you going to, are you going to join us and stuff? But then, you know, his, as soon as we started playing, we were, we were coming up with new songs like every second. And it's like, so we're, we're, we're coming up with new music and it was such a good energy that he was like, Oh no, no, I'm in hundred percent. Yeah. I was out. I'm in. So now we've got, you know Blake and and Steve and me and Justin, and we're playing. Uh, we just played the 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 Wolf Bar first gig after a year of hiatus of of having a full on band on stage. Oh, nice! Twenty so, second, and it was great. It was great. I'm gonna post some videos and stuff like that from the show because it was a great time. Yeah. Uh, we were playing the Roxy on Wednesday, this next Wednesday, and then we've got a couple of festivals coming up. I 
do not sure if it's June or July. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't have that information because I'm waiting for like the official poster to come out to post mm -hmm. those uh, dates yet for it. But we do have like April events. And uh, if you give me a couple of seconds, uh, I can probably look up what the next April event is so we can, so we can plug that one. Well, yeah, but, I'm gonna, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to include it anyway. So you don't have to worry sure. about, you know, you can, like I said, you can just message okay. that to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So people can see it written down. I think that's always a big help. Yes, for sure. So, so don't worry about looking it up for it. Up okay. For it. Yeah, we can we can probably like put it on on the screen on the text or something like that. It's like this next bit, <laughs> or I, I'm not sure if we put it in the show notes or or or. Uh... I'll ask my editor. I can always ask my editor to put it up. Awesome. Or, um, yeah, because he's pretty good. Um, yeah. So that's really cool. And if you anytime you have anything, if you're posting it. Uh, tag me so I can I can share it because sometimes you know what what it's like now you get something that's like yeah. five days later it's like well that's a little late no no yeah so I'm always willing to share people's work you know that had been on my show for sure right mm -hmm. um, we're going to be running out of time but it's just so it's been so much fun listening uh, to you oh we could probably do another interview in the near future as well like I'd be I'd be awesome and I'd like to have like other band members participate as well yes yes yeah. okay we'll set that up after we finish this. Um, I have to go, I have to do something, I, but I'll get back to you a little bit later today with some dates that we can do another interview with other mm -hmm. band members. That'd be fantastic. I love that. And I would also like, um, whether it's the same one or maybe another different one with you showing some of your work. Okay. You know, okay. So people can see that as well, right? With the, with the links to that and, and just maybe two more interviews for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, that? right now, if if I do have, I, I have a gallery opening right now in oh. White Rock on Crescent Beach. Oh, um, no. Me and two other artists, two of the other artists that are so also art battle uh, heavies, um, we got together and uh, thanks to thanks to some community uh, programs, yeah. we were able to find a spot in the White Rock Beachers Place uh, pop-up gallery. Um, and we're showing our things until the end of April. Sorry, not the end of April till the end of March, but um, Ooh, but yeah, we're going to we're planning on doing other events and things like that. But okay, yeah, um, but right now, like my art's work showing there in 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 the gallery. Um, but if you guys want to see, like, we we're posting all these things on social media on our Instagram accounts. Okay. My mine is JP Vega Creative on Instagram. Um, we also have TikTok. We've got YouTube. We've got like Rocket Fuel has all these links rocket fuel on instagram rocket fuel the band uh youtube uh rocketfuel.com so e either way on facebook we're also rocket fuel um so i'll send you all those links so we can we can share with everybody and 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 have them join in whatever social media they enjoy because some people like youtube and some people like tiktok and and we've got them on all those formats so i'll definitely share everything and they'll also we constantly post our you know our events yeah what's going on and everything like that on all these all these social medias and things so we are we are uh, pretty tech savvy fantastic yeah. all right Thanks. well we're gonna end it there um and so the audience you've been listening to juan pablo vega i will again all of those things you said you'll be able to see the dates written down for you and check it out and, and you know if you're an artist whether you're a musician or a painter whatever it's so great to go see things live or in person. It's just really exciting. Bring something different to your life. Anyway, so check it out, people. And um, thanks for watching the show. I hope you continue to do so. In the meantime, peace out, folks.